Today we will be discussing how to use our finger joint gadget for VCard Pro. Uh, before we get started, some preconditions that are important to know if you plan on cutting this on a CNC machine is you need a CNC router with the capability to travel over the edge of the table and the distance that it can travel is to be as far as the thickest piece of wood that you will be machining. Um, and then you will want a jig to hold the wood in place in front of the machine. So the first thing you need to do is to create a new file. Once you create a new file, uh, specify the parameters uh, that you want for your board, the width, height, and thickness. Make sure the starting point for your X, Y is in the top left hand corner of this box. And so once you have that selected and you're satisfied with what you have, click OK. Navigate to the gadgets tool pane and click on finger joints. Now that we are in the finger joints interface, you can see the parameters that are required to create the finger joint. We will be going over all of them. So the first parameter is the number of interior pins. This is referring to the number of interior pins that you would want on your pin board. The number of sockets on the socket board will be one more than the number of interior pins on the pin board. This number defaults to three. The next parameter is the end pin width. This measurement will indicate the size of the two end pins on the pin board. Uh, the default value of this is 0.625 inches. The next parameter is the end mill diameter. This is required and indicates the size of the bit that is being used to cut the board. This parameter is also used when calculating one of the advanced fields pass over. Um, you will need to update this end mill diameter within vCarve itself when you go to simulate the tool pass, but I will remind you of when to do that and make it very clear when you need to do that to ensure proper cuts. And next we'll be talking about the advanced section. The first parameter in the advanced field is the clearance. The clearance is the gap that will be left open between a pin and a socket. The default value of this is a 0 0.005 inches. The next thing we're going to talk about, uh, we'll skip over the pass over for just a second, will be the divided and straight through. These indicate the cut styles that the joint can be cut with. Uh, the straight through cut means the sockets for the selected board will be cut in a single pass. The divided cut means the board will be cut in two passes. The divided cut will take longer to cut out, but it provides a better quality cut. The straight through cut will take less time than the divided cut, but may not provide as clean of a cut in our experience. The divided cut uses the pass over parameter to help determine how the cut should be divided. This parameter is calculated based on 95% of the end mill diameter. You can get a pass over by clicking the calculate pass over button. If you need to change your end mill diameter, so let's just say you want to make it 0.20, you can come down here to calculate pass over. Click calculate pass over and it'll change the pass over value to a recommended uh, to a value that we recommend. Uh, for this demonstration I'll be still using the 0 0.25 but just wanted to show that. Uh, after knowing these uh, parameters uh, you may create your finger joint. So now that we have our parameters entered we want to start generating our cut paths. So we're going to go over to layer, get rid of layer 1 and then we can choose which board we want to start with. I just like to start with the pin board personally so you want to click to get rid of the socket board and just have the pin board available. Now after that since we're doing a divided cut, uh, which is a little bit more complicated than a straight through cut, that's why we have this little overlap here. This length is that passover amount. And you can see that's done in two cuts, these two separate rectangles. But if you need to select all the rectangles on this board, so the best way to do that is to, you can either slide your mouse over all of them, or you can just simply hit Control A. After they're all selected, you want to go over to this panel, the toolpath panel, and click on the pocket toolpath operation. Now this is where I said you want to make sure you update your end mill. If you have a different end mill, you can go in here and select the different end mills that are preset in vCarve Pro, or you can create your own end mill. Make sure to check that this diameter, this length, is the same as the end mill that you provided in our program, in our interface. So after making sure that that is clear. Um, you can go down here to clear pocket. We generally recommend the raster cut style and the direction to be climb, but you can use whichever one you like. And then you want to hit calculate. So now we have this wooden board and the simulation of this board. 
So we can go up here to toolpaths and we can preview the toolpath and see that it cuts out as we expect. That looks like a pin board to me. So once we have that, we can close this preview. We can select this pocket and we can go up here to save toolpath. Okay, so then this allows you to save the toolpath to a flash drive that can be plugged into your CNC machine so that machine can actually create these joints. Now we want to go back and calculate the toolpaths for our other board. It's a very similar process. So let's go back over to this preview. And you want to get rid of the board you were just looking at. In our case, we were just doing the pin board. And now we want to look at the socket board. Go through the same process. You can just hit Control A to select all the rectangles. Come over here to the pocket toolpath and ensure that your end mill is still the same. And uh, I should have said this last time, but you can change the cut depth to whatever depth you want. So that can determine the depth of the pockets. And again, we have our raster and climb cut direction. And then hit calculate. Uh, you want to reset the preview. And you want to make sure the previous pocket is unchecked. So now we can be sure that we are just looking at our socket board and then you want to hit run and here this looks like a socket board that will fit with our pin board so after previewing that you can close this click on the pocket 3 and you save the toolpath again save it wherever you want so you can put it on a flash drive and plug it into your CNC machine and watch our joints get created Thank you very much for watching. You can download this on our website at bitdust.onucs.org. There should be a link to that in the description to this video. Um, every joint gadget that we have on our website has its own web page. On that web page, you can find a list of instructions on how to use this gadget, similar to this video, but just in text form. Uh, uh, the descriptions of our parameters, uh, some images so you can kind of see how the joint is labeled with our parameters and uh, the list of the preconditions I talked about at the beginning of our video and a link to download our gadget.